Brad and I greet you all with the peace of the Lord. I invite you, the ones that are able to stand in reverence to the Word of God, that we can find in chapter in the book of Matthew, the gospel according Matthew wrote, chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20, verse 12, 13, and 14. Let's read. The last ones work only one hour, and you have making the same we that wear us down and the tiredness of the day. But he answered. My friend, do I cause you any aggravation? Haven't I, according to you, I have paid the last one as many as I paid you. But this parable, it's a parable told by Jesus, and that message, the parable, it's called the parable of the last workers. And we will see very well explained all the phases of the project of salvation for mankind. We will see with details everything that God has created Keep going. One more. Yes. parable we can see the whole story of the church the time in Israel in the Old Testament the time has a different shift is different than ours over there they used to say first time of the day second time of the day third time of the day sixth time of the day, the ninth hour of the day, and the eleventh hour of the day. So then, that's how the day finished. And they had also the vigils of the night between four and four hours, sections of four hours. The day in Israel starts at 6 p.m. That's how the, the next day starts. At the, uh, the twelfth hour is the when it starts a new day. Now you will understand why the word says that Jesus will die, and by the third day he will resurrect. For Jesus has died. What time? Three p.m. for our time. And for the Hebrew. 
for the Jewish, it was the ninth hour of the Hebrew day. So three hours after that, a new day started, which is the Saturday for us will be 6 p.m. So Jesus died 3 p.m. And so Saturday starts 6 p.m. So 6 p.m. of Saturday starts the Sunday. So by the third day, Jesus rose again. And if you count, if he died on Friday, the Bible is not accurate. He's supposed to die on Monday, but it's different than our count. By the third day, based on the Hebrew shift or schedule. So he resurrected Sunday morning for our days, Sunday morning. So the people of Israel, they count their daily schedules and shifts like that. So in the first verse of the chapter 12, it says, And because the kingdom of God is according to man, uh, head of a household, and he went to work. And according to the workers, one money or one coin sent them to the vineyard. The verse 3 says, And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the market marketplace and said to them, You also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, I'll give you. So they went. So the parable of the last workers talks about a head of a household that was contracting workers to work in his vineyard. Who is this man? Who is this father? He is God, the father. And by the early dawn, he was already looking for people to work. Meaning God is, is looking to save men since early times. <coughs> since the beginning, even before the creation of man, the Lord was looking for the man. He already had a purpose for mankind, a project to bring the man to work in his work, of, which is the work of the Holy Spirit. In the morning, in the early dawn, early in the morning, the first workers, the laborers, talks about the New Testament. Before the sun rises, God was preparing man for salvation, to help him, to give him all he needs to go out of the comfort zone and receive some, something from God's part, from God's side. So the third verse, So the ninth hour talks about the third time based on Hebrew schedule. God the Father go after man to, to rescue man. So the third hour of the day, which is 9 a.m. in our time, remember in the book of, book of Acts, when the church was established, and the Pentecost has happened. When that moment took place, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the church, the early church. They were praying at the temple, seeking for the Lord. The Holy Spirit was poured out upon them, and they spoke in tongues, and everybody thought they were like drunk. And Peter answered, We cannot be drunk at this time of the day, which is the third hour, which is 9 a.m. for our time. Nobody drinks anything alcoholic by 9 a.m. So the servants were taken by the Holy Spirit, taking them away from the reason 
So this is what the, the, the wine do to man. Takes away his reasonable thoughts and feelings. All the reason, all the, the logical, and he places the joy of salvation in Jesus Christ. That's why we are here serving the Lord as we have joy <coughs> to be in the house of the Lord. We are not drunk. We are conscious that the Holy Spirit is being poured out upon us. So the, the, the third hour talks about the beginning of the church, the early church. God went after man and brought him to work in his work, in his project. So the second shift now, and God always work towards man's heart and all the needs. And he knows what is in his heart, what in our hearts. God knows ourselves deeply in our sincerity. So that's why he insists we go after and he seeks for workers, for true, for, uh, true worshipers. He mentioned about David, I found a man according to my heart. So this is the type of man and woman that God is looking for within a world the Lord is looking for the, the true the true men that will adore him in spirit and truth. So when he found Peter, for example, he was a very simple man, a fisherman. So when Jesus went to find him, he was feeling frustrated, trying all night, not taking anything. And he says, Peter, come and follow me. I'll make you a fisherman of humans. So Peter was called by Jesus. He, f he had an encounter with Jesus and he started to follow him. And even with all his struggles, sometimes denying, disobeying, and Jesus was very patient with him. Until the Holy Spirit being poured out and now Peter turned himself into a great preacher. Right after Pentecost takes place. How many souls accepted Jesus? 5,000 people surrendered to the Lord. Imagine you in an open field and 5,000 people preach and 5,000 people accepted Jesus. So in the second one, 3,000. There's nothing better. But The, the other times of the day will come. So Jesus also called John, the apostle. Young. He also was called to be a laborer. Jesus found Matthew, which is a tax man. He was working. He saw Matthew and he says, Matthew, follow me. So he left everything and he started following Jesus. So the rulers who like people, the people hate because they charge the taxes, fees, and they charge too much, way over. Oh, okay. So well, an example of uh, a ruler was Zacchaeus, the man that went to the tree to, f to find Jesus. These people were like despicable. Now imagine someone like that to follow Jesus. So Matthew was a disciple that left money to follow Jesus. And for a Jewish, it's even more difficult. And he abandoned everything to follow Jesus. What a blessing. Miracle. Only Jesus can do that. So after, he went to, and he found a woman caught during the moment of sin. 
This woman was an adulterer. She needs to be stoned. By the law of Moses, that's what should happen to her. When a woman was caught in an act of sin, adultery, so they came and brought her to Jesus to test him. They want to see the limits of Jesus. If he was love or if he was like a, a follower of the law. So then, here's this woman before him and they ask him, you wanna, what do you want to say? We're going to stone her or are you going to forgive her? And with the wisdom from heaven, he answered. Because if Jesus says, let her go, they will say, oh, he's bro breaking the law. Yeah, but if he says, stone her, so they might criticize him saying, oh, now where is the love that you are preaching? And with wisdom, Jesus says to everyone, whoever has no sin, throw the first stone. So everybody was looking to each other. Everybody knows each other. Uh, I want to see if you are courageous to throw. Don't do it, huh? I know you. I want to see if you have courage. I know you. You're not easy. Nobody threw any stone. So to accuse people, it's easy. To set bad things on the people's back, to charge, to impose, it's easy. But when the situation is against you, then the conscience waits. Then you have to analyze and you might think, oh, I need to be different. So Jesus says, whoever has no sin, throw the stone. And they don't use pebbles. It was like a bricks. If he hits the head, no chance. So then he addressed to the woman and says, Daughter, where are your accusers? Right after everybody left, all the bricks fell on the floor. <coughs> and, she, and he asked her. And she said, Lord, no one stayed. Nobody accused me. So then Jesus says, So go out. And she didn't go. She stayed. Imagine, brethren, a man with 30 years of age. He was a worker, very, very strong, very courageous. A man to good effort. He used to go to the, the wilderness to collect uh, wood. He was a strong man physically. With 30 years old, to look at this woman and to say, Daughter, where are your accusers? She was not used to be called daughter. She was a, a woman of shame. For, he, for her situation, she was always aggravated. And now Jesus used so much love and called her by daughter. A man with 30 years old only. So he looked at her with a pure heart and like a child, innocent. So the, the look, the way that Jesus looked, always reach out to the man and the needy. Peter, when he, he denied he betrayed Jesus three times when he, they crossed with each other and Jesus looked at him and Peter looked at Jesus. Peter understood his, his failure. I betrayed the Savior. The look, the way the look Jesus looked, it has a power to transform. It takes away any pain, any suffering for his look. It's a prophetic look of love. And that woman could not do anything. She lost the reaction. Same thing happens to us. Since the first time that Jesus looked at us, wherever we were, when we found his, his look, we never left his presence. And we never will. For we have found the great love of our lives. Great forgiveness. Only Jesus could give us. Many others. Paul, the apostle, he also was called. So God had an encounter with him. 
And even with all the anger, all the hate, he has a bad fame to be a persecutor of the church. And so the persecutor turned into himself and someone persecuted. <coughs> so Paul also was transformed and he was the one used by God to bring all the doctrine, all God's will transmitted in the Bible. Everything we have today as a doctrine, it was brought by this servant of the Lord. He was a vessel in God's hand. Wherever was need to be transmitted to the churches, even though inside the prison, he wrote all the letters for all the churches that he went. He says, even though I am in prison, but the word of God is free. The word of God is free, and God use, always use his servants. Sometimes we have no in ourselves, we cannot do it, but our life, our testimony is the greatest preach, the greatest way to, to spread the gospel. The, 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 the way of life is our greatest message. When someone look to you and say, this is a man of God, this is a woman of God, I'll follow her, I'll look for her because I know I look for him because I know he will have an answer for me, a word for me. So, as I mentioned already, Paul brought the doctrine, the word, the foundation. So now the Holy Spirit prepared this team to announce the gospel of Jesus. As the gospel needs to be spread, and the instruction from God is, stay in Jerusalem until you're being vested by this power. A tongue of fire was seen at the moment of the Pentecost. And the message was, Jesus is alive. So they started to go out, leaving Jerusalem. So Peter, for example, he had a great encounter with the Gentiles. And the Lord said to him, You're going to go to Cornelius' house and you're going to bring the gospel. But I'm not used to, to be in the Gentiles' house. And he went. When he was there talking for, to the Gentiles, <coughs> the Holy Spirit also came upon them, baptizing them with the fire, preparing them to also spread the word. Until then, salvation was uh, towards Jerusalem and Israel the people of Israel. That was the beginning of the church. Now, salvation was grace. It was not by the law. It was established by faith and grace. And it was supposed to be spread to the whole hum humankind. Everyone could have access to the Word. And the Word says that close to the sixth time and ninth, he did the same thing. So the sixth hour talks about noon. And the ninth, and the ninth hour. So from noon to 3 p.m., it's the, the hotter moment of the day. So the top of the head looks like it's going to burn. After noon, if you don't have a protection, shade, you might have a headache because it's a moment of trials. So now the church starts to preach the gospel. And what moment was that? It was the moment of persecution. And the parable says that the head of the household starts to call more people. In this moment of persecution, <coughs> so the Roman Empire was persecuting the church. If you mention Jesus, if you mention that you're a believer, not only you're going to prison, but you you are condemned to death. So 
the scholars mention that they sometimes they don't see the, the daylight they stay there for the next day to be sacrificed and they were thrown as a families with children horrible things the scholars mention details about this cruelty after the some member family members not dead losing blood fell on the floor so the family the other family members that stay alive went out and grabbed them and used their blood to write on the walls like words of love saying go in peace go encounter our savior the wife the husband seeing another family member like a son the children imagine the suffering imagine the cruelty it was the one of the worst moment for the church for the the early church so these people also were called like the the parable mentioned many that was going to watch this spectacle offered by the the, the roman empire many convert to the lord they turn to the lord to see the testimony of the ones that are dying but they couldn't deny the faith in jesus they were killed burnt alive sometimes but they <coughs> never denied their love for their savior they those are the laborer of the vineyards men and women that were called to give testimony of the operation of the holy spirit in their lives so then it came a moment of the arenas the enemy of our souls tried any strategy possible almost two centuries of persecution and as more as they were persecuted more the church grew so whatever the enemy tried the power of god overcome all these attempts so the enemy of our lives never accomplished even though he tries hard he tried to cause trouble for the growing of the gospel but the church keeps growing and every time the devil is being ashamed embarrassed for the power of god during the trials during the struggles if we stand still the lord will honor us because our god is the lord of the lords there's no defeat for the servants of the lord no failure as we stay firm in the lord with our faith we're not going to see any failure we're going to face trials we're going to face problems struggles but standing still in our faith the lord who sustains us and the promise is be faithful to death and i'll give you the crown of life whoever uh, conquered will not experience the second death the first one it's natural we are subject to natural death physically but what is more important is the the eternal life to stay with jesus we're not going to face the second death even though if we die physically we're going to be living forever eternally with jesus so now the enemy tries a different strategy he's trying to mixing mix the the government and the church he's trying to put together to confuse all the mankind and we see in the book of revelation but even though he couldn't do it there was a man called polycarp he was a pastor of his mirna church 80 something years old he was arrested for spreading the gospel and he was they tried everything so he can deny his faith the books mentioned that his testimony is marvelous is marvelous and they 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 was trying even though like just say i deny jesus you don't need to say many things just say that phrase and you're going to be saved and he says how could i serving a god for 86 years 
86 years. At the end of my life, I'll deny him. No way. He can kill me. And he was put to die, burnt alive on the cross. So they, they light the fire, and the Bible says that his body was preserved. It was a supernatural thing. They had to kill him with a sword because he was inside the, the flames glorifying God. Nothing happened to his body. It's a miracle. Imagine such a supernatural uh, act of justice from God because the fire of the Holy Spirit within him was way, way greater than the fire that they tried to kill him. The, the friends of Daniel as well, they were inside the furnace seven times uh, hotter than normal. They were walking. The Bible says not even a smoke, not even a hair. Because the operation of the Lord, when it's done, it's complete. And it's made to preserve mankind, the ones that serve the Lord. Now what happens is, after all that, after the sixth and the ninth hour, where the servants of the Lord are going through this difficult moment, the enemy tried to mix again. And he said, nobody going to get killed in, anymore. So we're not going to bother you. We're going to make an accord, uh, commitment, an alliance. So we're going to hide the word, the Bible. And so the Bible was taken away. They burnt all the, all the editions of whatever left from the, the Bible. So there was a great period, a very long moment that nobody had access to the Word of God. Only a selected group had access. And at that moment, who God called? Martin Luther. And he didn't accept the fact that the Bible will be hidden. And he was a man called by God to open this treasure. So he started to translate and he was spreading copies of the Bible. But he was a man used at this very difficult moment. The Lord always find an escape for the man to run and to protect himself within Jesus, which is the rock. God always brings solution for all the problems. Now the Bible will start to be printed and everyone has an access to the Bible. So the lyrics, what Bible says about lyrics? Lyrics kills, but the Holy Spirit brings life. So people has the Bible edition in their hands, but they need the action of the Holy Spirit, the operation of the Holy Spirit to, to go beyond the lyrics and brings the revelation and to show who is really Jesus. Now the Holy Spirit start to operate in a different way. God allows man to, to discover the secrets beyond the lyrics. So now he understands that he don't need an intermediate. He can go straight to God through Jesus. Then the man starts to have direct experiences with God without any other human being as an intermediate. Now we're talking about the eleventh hour. The head of the household went out again to call laborers. So the day will finish in what time? The the twelfth. That was the last when the day finished. So one hour before that he went out. You know what moment is that? What is the prophetic moment? It's our moment. 21st century, the, the church of the last moment, the church that the, the, the God has called at the last moment. The 11th hour is the last moment before the second come of Jesus. And we know he will come by the turn of the day. So prophetically, we will encounter our Savior in the perfect day when the day turns. 
So now it's the moment that Jesus is call again, calling again more laborers to work in the project, the work of the Holy Spirit. Not a moment of Maranatha as an institution. We have like 51 years of activities, but it's a moment of the faithful church. And there will not be another church, like the Bible mentioned, faithful church. We are not talking about a church per se as an organization. We are talking about a people that is being called by God in the four corners of the earth. And it's with these people, the faithful people, that God is calling and counting so we can announce what is our, what is our role, what is our mission, what we need to do in this vineyard. Saying, Jesus is about to come. Jesus will return. Our message today, it's the same message that they preached 2,000 years ago. The Holy Spirit is still the same. The operation is the same. 2,000 years about has passed. And we are here. Interesting that our salary, our payment will be the same. As we read that says that the the contract that the head of the household made with the first one, it was the same as the other ones. It's one salary. Who started in the, in the morning? Others uh, started at by noon. And now, we even, even we being called by the 11th hour, you know how much we're going to make? We're going to receive the same payment. One coin, one salary. One denarius. Jesus paid that price on the cross. There's no two lords. There's no two contracts. The same, same plan that God has is the same. We're living at the moment now. The moment of soon. And that's why the man of the parable says, I'll pay the same payment. As for the price is the same. That's why we can glorify the Lord. We are living a moment that many things has passed. The church went through several situations. <coughs> what, what the church is going through now can compare. The persecutions are different. It is, it can compare for what the, the early church went through and the love of God is the same and when God look to our faith when he look to our hearts what you feel what you feel for God before God is the same as the men that were thrown in the arenas that were burn on the cross for God this is what important so therefore we cannot look back as we are about to be rescued, raptured. In God's watch, we are very close to the noon, which is the, the midnight, which is the prophetically moment about Jesus to come. So we, the church needs to be ready, prepared to encounter that Savior. So to close, I would like to read Revelation chapter 24. Whoever was by the roof, do not go down to take anything out of his house. This is what they, they mentioned to, to Jesus. Let him who is on the house stop not go down to take anything out of his house. When you start building a house, where do you start? Foundation, right? So we see all the project of God is established from bottom to top. The doctrine, God calling man, the walls, the interior, now the roof, the house top. In Israel, the, the top of the houses are like a terrace. So there was a moment sometimes that the family get together 
to relax, to celebrate. That was that was the place that they used to go, at the terrace. <coughs> Sometimes celebrating, and Jesus says, "Whoever is there, do not go down. Do not go down. Why? For this is the moment that we live in now. The church of the of God, the faithful church. We have all the project established. We're not missing anything. We don't want anything." Because the doctrine, it's, it's alive in our lives. The operation of the Holy Spirit is vivid in our lives. We can experience, we have, we have experienced this as a way of life. We don't need anything else. Now, we are called by the Lord to live moments like that. Moments of joy, moments of celebration, moments that we are in a spiritual feast as the Holy Spirit has taken care of us. So now, at the last moments, we cannot look back, we cannot turn back. Whoever is at the housetop, do not go down. We cannot lose heart, as soon our Jesus will come and we need to be prepared to be raptured and encounter Him. Amen, let's stand, let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, at this moment, we glorify your name for your word. We praise you for every day. We feel your powerful hands sustaining us, showing us the eternity that is ready, prepared for us. We glorify you for you have not forsaken us. You have opened our eyes of faith and you have shown us uh, the eternal life that you prepared for us. We praise you for one more day of work, of tiredness, things of this world. We, we made our effort to come here and we are in your house with joy in our hearts for we know that you are here among us. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Brethren, God gave a gift of the Holy Spirit, showing a man walking, and suddenly he stopped, and he started to think, I don't see the end of this way. Looks like it's very far, very long. I have walked for very long, and I don't see the destiny. Many things like that. Some people were brought by God to live in Jesus, walk in Jesus. Sometimes they think, oh, Jesus is taking too long. The second come of Jesus is taking too long. But interesting that at this moment, the moment of the end, close to the end, we need to fight, to stand still, and to keep going on the, the way of, of the gospel. As for Jesus might not come today, so we talk about the rapture of the church, we are being prepared for that for 2,000 years, people are pre preaching that. It didn't happen yet, but you cannot forget that there is an individual rapture, not for the whole church, but sometimes our time is counted and it's limited, and it has, it might have an end, so you might not be raptured with the church, but you might be taken before, if God calls you. So we cannot look back, we cannot turn back, we cannot give up. The Lord has called us, so we can walk in Jesus, as salvation is dynamic. Anyone that stops in this way, it falls behind. So you need to find and you need to ask God to give you strength to keep going in Jesus. Is it difficult? You're not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. But stay firm with the Lord. And the Lord will take away this, these thoughts that are not coming from the kingdom of heaven. And He'll give you strength to resist 
and to conquer all the trials and, and struggles. Let's listen to a song. Lord God, we like to bless your name, as for we are privileged, we are part of this elected people called by you, people that will go to live in heaven. We bless you for your, all your goods, for all the acts of justice, and all the help that you have sent us. We, we shall not want anything because you have provided. Receive our gratitude, our praises. It's the way that we like to express how grateful we are. This is our service. Give us a night of rest in your presence, in the name of Jesus. And in your name we say, may the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the operations of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon your people today and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. This week we are praying 24 hours, praying for the work abroad, for all the, the motives, salvation, all the countries, so the Lord can preserve our lives. And we say to all of you, peace of the Lord. So next service, Thursday, 
And Saturday, especially, we're going to have uh, an event with the uh, adolescents, the children. So if you would like to invite, we still have invitations. Invite them all. So to all, peace of the Lord.